Greetings. I'm grateful to all of you who have revisited and returned with me to this mental and spiritual space. To commence our session, I will start with an affirmation that centers on the Ori. Bimo ba lowo lowo. Ori ni no rofun. Ori mi iwo ni. Bimo ba bimo la aye. Ori ni ni orofun. Ori imi iwo ni. Ire bobo ti mi ani la aye. Ori ni ni orofun. Ori imi iwo ni. Ori pele. Atete ni ran. Atete gbe ni ko usa. Ko usa ti i dani ikbe. Le yin ori eni. Ashe. Okay, and I will share what I just said, uh, interpreted in English. If I have money, it is Ori whom I will praise. My Ori, it is you. If I have children on earth, it is Ori whom I will praise. My Ori, it is you. All good things that I have on earth, it is Ori whom I will praise. My Ori, it is you. Ori, I salute you. You do not forget your devotees. You bless before the other Orisha. No Orisha blesses without the consent of Ori. Okay, in this session, um, en route to approaching our Orisha breakdowns, we're going to begin with the most foundationally critical spirit entity that one should know and comprehend. And uh, the entity that I'm referring to is you. You are the most important spirit entity uh, to examine, explore, and have knowledge of before any other deity that you deem or have been taught is external to yourself. So your spiritual uh, and personal, your personal spirit, I should say, and mind matrix functions as the gateway to any spirit contact and development. So it's important first to have some level of uh, comprehension about that spiritual matrix within you as well as your own uh, mental matrix. Uh, your eyes cannot see what your mind does not comprehend. And your spirit will not engage any spirit that it has not opened the door to. This affirmation that I uh, just stated, it speaks to that. If you do not or cannot open your own personal cosmic gateways, no amount of prayer, rituals, candle lightings, uh, ebos, uh, exorcisms, misas uh, will bring you your desires. It all starts with you strengthening your spirit, strengthening your connection to your highest self and maintaining a good auric balance throughout your multiple dimensions that the entity known as you does exist in. To get into these uh, concepts in this session, I'm going to be pulling from two traditions. Uh, one, the Haitian voodoo tradition, as well as the Nigerian Yoruba tradition. I'm going to start with uh, Yoruba and get into some some things and uh, in doing that hopefully it will, it will shed some light on um, why it's critically important to understand the spirit slash spirits really that exists within you so to start off I'm going to uh, pull for an excerpt from the Ori uh, information from my book Grasping the Root of Divine Power and I'll begin here. Ori, your own personal superhero. I mean superhero. Here is where we find one of the greatest distinguishing aspects between African spirituality and Western religion. With the Yoruba aspect of the Ori, it is noted that we are all birthed into this world accompanied by a personal guardian, Arisha, who in fact is our truest self, the source of our energy, your ori is you, and you are your ori. 
this is ours to have and takes no acceptance of its presence or ritual that cleanses us from the impurity of our conception as a result of the sin of man entering the course of woman. Your Ori holds the portion of divinity and destiny that you were appropriated in Harun, which is heaven, prior to your arrival here in Aye, which is earth. It is your individualized ration of the supreme consciousness that maintains the motion of the universe. It is commonly stated in regards to Ori that is the container for a person's destiny and that destiny is predetermined in Orun. It is the author's deduction that a person's Ori represents more of a preordained path rather than a predestined path. The predestined path would be one that would not require effort on the part of the owner of that Ori or head. For example, if one is predestined to be a person of great notoriety and success and live a life of opulence and comfort, then it would be logical to presuppose that the individual would not have to do anything to support or motivate the materialization of that type of existence. We know, as a side note, this is antithetical to even the process that you're undergoing right now, which is raising your spirit vibration. So you would have to do no type of work or uh, put no contribution to your own development if your life was completely predestined. Your Ori is positioned at your crown, brow, and navel chakra. Points to name a few. Okay. Your Ori is will slash drive, but has not character. Your Ori defers to the various Orisha consciousness in order to express itself with the most appropriate character in a given situation. For instance, if your Ori deems it necessary for you to face a situation in order to move from fear to fearlessness, it may utilize the Shango consciousness in order for it to accomplish what is desired. The Shango consciousness will serve as the vehicle for character, while the Ori is the propulsion of manifestation for that Shango force. Your Ori has multiple aspects that all function in coalition with one another. You have your Ori, which is your conscious mind, your Ara, which is your physical body temple, your Ori Inu, this is your inner self, your superconscious mind, your Ori Ipako. This is your connection to your extended family, your Ori Ipori. This is your true spirit body that resides in Orun, your Ori Iwaju. This is your first eye, your clairvoyant portal, your Ori Atari. This is your transcendent cognition that connects you to your spirit self in Orun. Our Ori assists us in achieving oneness with all of creation while maintaining and strengthening our relationship with our highest order thinking and functioning. Our Ori is our chain link to the Supreme Intelligence. It is our individualized portion of Oludumare's divine spark, which allows us to fully realize ourselves as deities. It is the paramount self and the superconscious. One can connect to the Ori through meditation and rituals similar to connecting with the various Orisha. And I'm going to pull out, stop there, <laughs> I mean, and explain uh, this notion a bit further. The Ori is a notion that should be familiar to many of us, whether we study Eastern philosophy or Western mythology. The Ori is the individualized portion of the greater life expression. In Yoruba tradition, we have the concept of Ori, which can be broken down, as I just did, uh, in the book. And it's important to understand that the Ori not only speaks to your spirit consciousness and your spirit concept, but it also references the physical plane. Because with the Ori components, you have the Ori Ode, which is your physical outer head, or um, even what you could consider to be your brain, your flesh brain. And you have the Ori Ara, which is your body, or uh, maybe better referenced as your temple. Okay, Your Ori Ipako is what connects you to your ancestors. That is your connective link, and it's at the back of your head, uh, right, right where your, your skull meets your spine. Okay, that is your Ori Ipako. Interesting enough, if you watch the movie um, Pulp Fiction, 
with John Travolta and Ving Rhames and Nicolas Cage, I think was in that that one. I'm not sure, but um, if you watch that movie, you'll notice that Ving Rhames has a band aid on the back of his head, and in Eastern philosophy, it is considered that when a soul is stolen, that it is extracted through the back of the head. Interesting enough, that's the same place that the Ori Ipako resides. Um, but another Ori component you have is your Ori Inu, which we call our inner consciousness. Right? That's that's the um, the voice in your head that you hear. But it also serves as the container for the other Ori components. Um, its position is in your belly button, all right, or your navel, I guess. Um, and in that position, uh, that's where you typically will leave and enter when you astral travel. So it's important at times to to keep that put that part of you protected. You know, one thing you can do um, to strengthen that part, and just as a as psychic protection, you can take um, a copper penny and place it over your belly button. You know, you could tape it there. I mean, I don't know. For some of us brothers who have uh, <laughs> hair on our stomachs, it, you know, it could be a little painful. So, you know, you figure out how to do that. But, you know, you could tape it there and then get it off with some water when you come back home so you're not um, torturing yourself. But uh, you could put a copper penny right over your navel, you know, or even the sisters, you know, waist beads are, are, are excellent. Um, to protect that area of your consciousness, you know this deals again with uh, psychic self-defense. All right, so that's your ori or ori inu, and after that you have the uh, ori iwaju, which you know I I call the first eye, but many people call the third eye, but that sits in the uh, center of your forehead or at where we call the the brow chakra or the brow arit. And um, that deals with your clairvoyant abilities or, you know, as we often say, your psychic abilities, your ability to see the underlying uh, meanings and the underlying causes of situations, to see beyond the profane, beyond the mundane, and to see the divine uh, energy, either surrounding or underneath the situation. You know, that is your Ori Iwaju. Uh, or your third eye, your first eye. Then you also have your Ori Atari. And your Ori Atari is on the crown of your head. And that's what keeps you connected to your spirit self, which is your Ori Ipori. Now, interesting enough, uh, the connection between these two, uh, or I shouldn't say even these, the connection between you and your higher self, which is your Ipori is maintained by a silver cord okay and silver is, is a very important metal to um, understand or mineral I don't know if sure it's a metal or a mineral but um, for those who know you know I'm sure you can correct me but uh, silver is used to heighten your perception and it's also used uh, to ensure that when you astral travel or you go to the astral plane that you make it back you know now we 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 go to the astral plane even when we dream. It's not just something that you do, you know, by lighting a candle and meditating or chanting. But, you know, most of us astral travel every night, you know. So silver is used to make sure that you make it back home, your your entire soul, and, and a portion doesn't get trapped somewhere else. Uh, it's also used to invoke higher consciousness and elevated awareness and things like that. But, you know, like I said, it said that your astral body is connected to your physical body by a silver chain um, and that's that's a universal concept that's not just coming out of the the, um, the Yoruba construct uh, interesting enough also in the Yoruba creation account we're told that Obatala descends from Orun to Aie which we know to be heaven to earth or uh, the fifth dimension to the third dimension 